Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. In my 30 year career as a physician, there have been several paradigm changes and challenges to the health of our community. We've had the opiate crisis. We've had the withdrawal of hormone replacement therapy for postmenopausal women. We've had the HIV crisis. But probably one of the most serious worldwide problems that have arisen during my career has been that of vaccine hesitancy. The World Health Organization declares vaccine hesitancy as one of the top 10 threats to public health worldwide. Much of that can be laid on the lap of this gentleman right here, disgraced English physician Andrew Wakefield. His 1998 paper linking autism and the MMR vaccination is responsible for much of the vaccine hesitancy that we see now. In the first several episodes of this series, I've outlined some of the investigative reporting of British journalist Brian Deere. This investigative reporting resulted in a hearing before the General Medical Council in the United Kingdom, which stripped Dr. Wakefield of his license. Of the 13 physicians in the paper, Dr. Wakefield and one other physician were stricken from the roles of medical practitioners in the United Kingdom. One physician, a junior physician, was acquitted. Ten physicians of the original 13 withdrew their support of the paper linking the MMR vaccination and autism. In this episode, I'm going to go over how Dr. Wakefield had set himself up to reap a financial windfall from the results of his now discredited paper. So let's cue up the music and see how this scheme was laid out and how it went astray. Dr. Wakefield had developed a theory by about 1995 that the MMR vaccination, and specifically the measles component of the MMR vaccination, somehow was linked to Crohn's disease and through Crohn's disease into the development of developmental disorders, specifically autism. Now, this was not wild measles virus. It was specifically the strain of measles virus that was found in the trivalent measles, mumps, and rubella vaccination. Dr. Wakefield patented a test to detect this virus, and he also developed a univalent measles vaccination, which he claimed would not cause this reaction resulting in Crohn's disease and autism. In January of 1996, he teamed up with an attorney by the name of Richard Barr in London who was working with a group called JABS, which was looking to have the MMR vaccination withdrawn from the market. Mr. Barr entered into an agreement with Dr. Wakefield to pay him a consulting fee of 150 pounds, nearly $200 per hour to evaluate children in support of a class action lawsuit against the makers of the MMR vaccination. Dr. Wakefield had also developed a univalent measles vaccination that supposedly would not result in this autistic syndrome. Mr. Barr and Dr. Wakefield also wrote an application to the Legal Aid Service in the United Kingdom. The Legal Aid Fund in England is a taxpayer-supported pool of money that is used to enable people that otherwise could not afford them to hire specialists and expert witnesses and have access to the justice system. This money was paid to Dr. Wakefield through attorney Richard Barr and grants to the medical school to fund his research into this MMR Crohn's autism syndrome that he was investigating. Mr. Barr had been hired by an anti-vaccination group in the United Kingdom called JABS which sought to establish a link between the MMR vaccination and autism, eventually hoping to win a class action lawsuit against the manufacturer of the vaccination and perhaps have the vaccine withdrawn from the market. Now, with the seed money that they originally got from legal aid, Dr. Wakefield began to receive referrals from Mr. Barr. Now, when he approached the hospital to set up this study, the idea was that he would simply evaluate consecutive admissions for bowel problems and developmental disorders. And in the course of the evaluation of these patients in their normal care, he would try to evaluate whether there was a link to the MMR vaccination. This is a standard way of conducting medical studies. For example, 
you look at everybody that's admitted with a diagnosis of community-acquired pneumonia between, say, September of one year and December 31st of the same year. And then you evaluate different courses of treatment that are based on a standard set of treatments. And you can perhaps look at one compared to the other and see if see if a certain combination of antibiotics seems to work a little bit better. Rather than being an experimental study, it's more of a case series study where you're just looking at different standard treatments compared to each other. Now, this is the nature of the proposal that Dr. Wakefield made to the Royal Free Medical College. They would just do a consecutive study of children with autism. However, unbeknownst to the Royal Free Medical College, these children were actually being referred to Dr. Wakefield directly by Mr. Barr and the anti-vaccination group, JABS. So they were basically loading these patients into the system. Now, prior to being admitted to Dr. Wakefield's study, these children were screened by Mr. Barr and the group JABS. They had to have certain symptoms. They had to have an MMR vaccination, and their parents had to feel as though the MMR vaccination had something to do with their developmental disorders. If they passed all these tests in a private interview with Dr. Wakefield, they were then admitted to the service at the hospital for inclusion in the study. Now, to fund this study, Mr. Barr applied to the Legal Aid Fund in the United Kingdom and received 25,000 pounds. He turned this over to the medical school on the condition that it would be given as a grant to fund Dr. Wakefield's study. Initially, the dean of the medical school had some issues with the ethics of this transfer and designation of funds. He was troubled enough to go to the British Medical Association for an ethics opinion. Now, the British Medical Association came back three months later with an opinion that the school could indeed accept the money to fund this study so long as the research was being properly overseen and transparent. Now, to satisfy this condition, the hospital required Dr. Wakefield to sign a statement that he had no conflicts of interest. Dr. Wakefield signed such a statement, but did not disclose the fact that he was being paid 150 pounds an hour by an attorney to evaluate patients for a possible class action lawsuit involving the subject of his research, which was the MMR vaccination. Furthermore, when the paper was eventually published in Lancet, in the disclosure section, it stated that the research was funded by a special trustee of the hospital. There was no disclosure that the special trustee of the hospital received the money through legal aid through an attorney for the purposes of evaluating patients for a potential class action lawsuit. So now that we have a little idea of the legal background of this study, let's see how Dr. Wakefield planned on capitalizing on this financially himself. Now, child number two was in the hospital in September of 1996. He underwent a lumbar puncture like this and a colonoscopy along with an MRI scan of his brain and numerous laboratory tests. Now, as this child was recovering from these procedures in the hospital, Dr. Wakefield put together an 11-page proposal for a new company that he wished to found. And he had a meeting with the hospital and some investors where he proposed this company, which would be based initially on the immunodiagnostic test that he had developed for the measles virus of the strain found in the MMR vaccination. Now, as part of this proposal, he estimated the amount of revenue that this test could generate between the United States and the United Kingdom of over 73 million pounds per year. And the idea behind this was that parents of autistic children would pay premium prices for this immunodiagnostic test to participate in this proposed lawsuit against the manufacturers of the MMR vaccine. As mentioned earlier, the hospital was involved in this, and in a meeting three weeks after this initial meeting in October of 1996, they were basically issued a check for 25,000 pounds by Mr. Barr, the attorney. This was subsequently followed up for a total of 50,000 pounds to be paid into a special trust in the hospital for Dr. Wakefield's research. Now let's fast forward to February of 1998. 
With much fanfare and support of the hospital, Dr. Wakefield released his paper. Now, one short week after this press release and the public outcry that it caused, Dr. Wakefield, the parent of child number 10, a ventured capitalist and several members of the hospital board, met to establish a company based in Dublin in the Republic of Ireland that would do laboratory testing, develop vaccines, and in conjunction with a private pay evaluation clinic associated with the hospital. And for two years, the hospital rode a wave of referrals to evaluate children for this new syndrome for possible inclusion in the class action lawsuit being put together by Mr. Barr. This business was put together entirely based on the vaccine scare produced by Dr. Wakefield's paper. Now to finance this company, this group of investors, including Wakefield, the parent of child 10, the hospital, and a venture capitalist, applied for 800,000 pounds in funding from legal aid to set up a laboratory in Dublin, Ireland to manage the immunodiagnostic testing and the development and marketing of Dr. Wakefield's patented univalent measles vaccination. They also sought private investment of 700,000 pounds, promising a return on the investment of 3.3 million pounds within three years of the investment and 28 million pounds annually once the technology was established. As part of the marketing for this business, two target populations were identified. The first group was litigation driven consisting of parents of autistic children and their attorneys. The second group was major pharmaceutical companies. Now the jump off for the company was anticipated to be in late 1999 or early 2000 when Dr. Wakefield would publish in Nature or another major publication a study confirming the identification of MMR-derived measles virus in infected tissue based on his new diagnostic testing. Well, everything was going swimmingly for Dr. Wakefield and his investors until late 1999. At that time, two events occurred. Number one was they did some of the initial research and could not identify vaccine-derived measles virus in the tissues of autistic children. The second was there was a change in administration at the medical school. And when taking a hard look at Dr. Wakefield and his research, they began to ask some questions. Specifically, they had questions about the small sample size of only 12 children in the original study. They wanted to have a much larger study of approximately 150 children to confirm the results. The second thing is they were increasingly alarmed at a potential conflict of interest with Dr. Wakefield with his business interests depending on the results of his research. In January of 2000, Dr. Wakefield was summoned to the administrative offices of the Royal Free College and informed of these concerns and encouraged to do this second study. Three months later, in March of 2000, the school followed up with Dr. Wakefield, and Dr. Wakefield responded that he was not going to be rushed in his work for financial incentives or demands of the school. They went back and forth, and the end result is Dr. Wakefield was discharged from the hospital in October of 2001. While they did reach a financial settlement, he let it be known that the reason that he was forced out of the hospital was the hospital was unhappy with the results of his research, not the way the research was done or the ethical considerations or the conflict of interest. They just didn't like the fact that he found a link between the MMR and developmental disorders. The end result was that Dr. Wakefield and his association with the MMR vaccination, the Lancet, the hospital, and eventually his medical practice came to a screeching halt. In the next episode, we're going to have a look at the inquiry into Dr. Wakefield by the General Medical Council.
which resulted in him being stricken from the roles of practicing physicians in the United Kingdom and his subsequent move to America. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Please hit the like and subscribe and that little bell icon because next week we're going to look into the investigation of Dr. Wakefield and his fellow researchers.